up next we've got super massive esports yes that is right the home of the faker killer himself dumble doge uh who is perhaps the most beloved support player in all of the international wildcard uh just because he is kind of a lunatic this kid is uh i i i adore him he's one of he's one of the first players to pull out bard he's one of the first guys to uh to really make sure that 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 champion uh that champion was was put into the top tier especially because now he is uh he's known as one of the bard gods of of the wildcard regions uh he also on top of that take a look at this He's a huge fan of Poppy support, and this is a pick that I am uh, that I am a hundred percent convinced is a lot better than people let on. Uh, the, he is a player. Uh, Poppy is a a champion with a ton of CC, really high base damages. Uh, her ult is amazing for peel or even just creating uh, opportune moments in team fights. This is a this is a champion that is, in my opinion. Uh, more than capable of, of being a, becoming a flex pick. Uh, and they're a team that loves flex picks. As you can see, uh, they've got Nautilus in the top lane. They've got Poppy in the bottom lane. Uh, you got, I mean, Graves, I can't really call him a flex pick anymore. He's a jungler. Uh, or, I mean, I guess he could be played a top lane. Uh, you got Lissandra, who can 100% be played in the top lane or the middle lane. You got uh, Ezreal, who you who can be played in the middle lane or the, or the AD carry role. These are guys that every single one of their lanes in this team composition can be played somewhere else. This is a team that loves, loves, loves these flex picks. And this is why I kind of love them. This is why that I, why I'm such a fan of this squad. Um, I don't believe that they, they are uh, world-class, but I love the way that they pick. I love the way that they are capable of finding all of these weird, bizarre picks. I mean, Double Doge is uh, now known for playing Elise support. This is a, that's a pick that we haven't seen since like 2012. It's wild. Like I, I, I love this team. I love whoever their coach is is a genius, as far as I'm concerned. They're so much fun to watch, um, but they're not that great. Um, so I think that the the the, re the way that this team sort of surprises somebody, hopefully maybe takes a, maybe takes a game or two. I don't know. Um, but the way that they're gonna have to they're gonna have to win this game is by by playing. Uh, in ways that nobody expects. Dumble Doge is going to have to make some plays, which he's not afraid to do, by the way. Um, and uh, especially against some of these these other guys uh, in, in the international wildcard regions. Um, so if you, if you start looking, let's see here. Where's this fight? Where's that first blood at? Where you at first blood? This is... Is this is where first blood pops up? Yes. Maybe? No, not quite. Um, there we go. All right, so this is uh, this is the first blood situation in this game. It's it's kind of chaos. Everyone's kind of going everywhere at once. Thaldron, Thaldron pops in. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, but this is a, this comes as a result of Dumble Doge. If you go back a little bit here, uh, Dumble Doge and Achu, uh, two of my favorite names in in the history of the world. Uh, these guys, are, look how far up they are. This is crazy. Like, the, the, no team should be this far up with that little health. Uh, they know they can get ganked. They know the bard is there. They know that there's this Gragas hanging out uh, in the jungle. They shouldn't be that far up. Uh, but this is that's what they do. They they look for really aggressive, uh, heavy tower pushes, make sure that that uh, that they that they know that they can they can sort of gain these lane advantages and work work that way. Uh, and it just shows with Dumble Doge's picks. He loves he loves his Poppy, man. He loves his Bard. He loves he loves playing early and uh, and and looking for really aggressive plays. Um, I'm not sure what happens here. I don't quite remember this play. But uh, all right, this is Dumble. Is this Dumble Doge doing some wild again? Let's find out. Like I, like I said, I just take joy in watching this team. I think they're so much fun. Or misses his ult, so they look for the tower dive. Dumble Doge goes down. Oh, this is sick awesome. It's pretty standard tower dive. All right. Well, somehow Thaldron makes them, makes them happen. I like Thaldron as well, because he's, he's willing to do these sort of weird, crazy plays. Ooh, look at that kill. That's actually, that's actually a pretty sick kill. Um, all right, so... So I really... There's not a. Like this is a pretty standard. It's kind of it's kind of a clown fiesta. Like there there people are dying randomly. Gragas somehow ends up with the most kills on hard random. 
uh, uh, same with Nautilus in the top lane. These are it's, it's weird things that they they manage. To, the carries no carry does well in this in this game. Um, but there's something that I wanted to. There's a, the the final team fight is what I really wanted to look at. Um, although we might we might get a sick Dumble Doge play here. I would love to see a sick Dumble Doge play. Where you at, buddy? All right, so here, yeah, there's Poppy missing his ult. Yeah, good job. Like I said, these are not goes in. So, uh, this is this is actually actually a pretty smart uh smart team fight from from uh from Supermassive. They they recognize that uh that the only real threats on on uh on hard random are going to be the this. Very, very fed. Uh, this, the, uh, excuse me. This, this very thread gro fed Gragas. Uh, this very fed Trundle. So they managed to peel off, make sure that uh, make sure that they are able to put down AOE damage that, that scares off uh, sort of the backline carries of Hard Random. Uh, and this Lucian on Hard Random isn't able to really do anything. So they, they just do a, a ton of AOE damage. Managed to bring down a lot of the a lot of the tanks in the front line, get kills on both Gragas and Trundle, uh, and while uh, while trying to keep their carries alive. This is that was actually a very smart team fight. Um, so if we move on here, so th this is what happens when you get weird picks. Um, you sort of get you, you get these uh, get teams that don't really know how to deal with them. Uh, like what, when was the last time we saw a, a support poppy in pro play? You've seen it here and there in Korea, but for the most part, it's been uh, been relatively relatively unseen. Um, but they forget, you know, with the, with when you look at the way look at the way hard random is positioning. They're positioning right here uh, next to a wall. Double Dosh has a if he had flash up, he could be able to flash in and, and knock him knock him into that wall. Uh, they, there's a lot of a lot of weird. Uh, sort of interactions that you don't get to see from from a support like how does how does Nautilus and Poppy interact uh, on the, when they're on the same team? That doesn't happen that often, especially when the Nautilus is that tanky. Uh, I mean, I guess it does happen, happen that often considering considering Nautilus is also playing a support. Um, but they can. This is how uh, Supermassive can start looking for wins. They have to make something. They have to make something happen with these weird picks. Um, so we're gonna take a look at this last team fight here. Uh, this is a standard siege. Uh, they're taking advantage of the fact that that hard random clearly doesn't know how to deal with their siege, uh, with the Ezreal on their team and then the threat of the engage from both the Poppy and the Nautilus, uh, as well as as the Lissandra who can tower dive relatively easily, especially because she has a uh, Zanya's Hourglass at this point. Uh, they know that they can just sort of shove this lane in, start start making sure that they can chip away at this tower. Uh, they don't need Baron yet. I mean, Baron's not even up for another minute and a half or minute fifty seconds. Uh, so they they're going to be looking for the engage play with these heavy tanks. Uh, Poppy's very tanky at this point. Nautilus is incredibly tanky, and once again, Nautilus has this Q this QSS. Take note, Western teams. Uh, take note, EU and NA tanks should be buying QSS this whole time, um, and it hasn't been happening in the LCS regions, and it's kind of bumming me out. So here you go. Um, so they're moving, uh, just sort of sitting here, waiting, 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 and eventually, during the next wave, I believe it is, they will look for the fight. They realize that the, the, the Nautilus pillar is down. Uh, hard random lands lands an ult on a... Uh, they land a part ult on, on a Chu, assuming that now is the time to go, but not. But Lissandra is able to... Jump in, ult uh, Zanias, keep herself alive. Uh, whereas Achu is able to deal a ton of damage to the back to the back line just from the nature of being Ezreal, and uh, win the game. This is this is this is how you play a, a this is how you play a heavy engaged siege comp. You look for these opportunities. You just chip away at turrets. You threaten the engage, and then when the time is right, you go in. Uh, you get your Nautilus ult down. You get your pop. You get your poppy ult to knock the the wrong people away. Uh, you make sure that you can get into the back line and, and win the game that way. And that, that's going to come as a result of a team picking sort of somewhat un unorthodox, uh, unorthodox stuff, uh, like, like your support Poppy, like your support, uh, like your support Elise, which, uh, I mean, that's more for pick comps, but this is, this is how you're going to do it. This is how, uh, this is how they're going to be able to 
get to the point where they can start taking down some of these major region teams um, where, the, where they can really get going uh, in terms of uh, in terms of making sure that they, that they're among the best teams in the world. And you know what? This could be who knows. This could be the this could be the split for or the the year for uh, for Supermassive to make to sort of make a play on uh, on becoming one of the premier regions of the world.